Welcome to another edition of Fun with Busted Jeeps. This video is going to be about replacing the ABS control module. This particular Jeep has a C2200 code. Uh, it's been intermittent and the symptom of that is that all of the dash lights light up. Um, I showed an example of that in the beginning of the video, but your traction control, ABS, lightning bolt, all of it goes on. But it doesn't come on until after you've driven the car over 10 miles an hour. So when you first start the car, it all looks great. You start on your merry way and all the lights come on. Um, there could be a few reasons for that. What I also have is a C121C, which is a torque request denied message. I used my scan tool and verified that it is the ABS module and not the PCM, which is great. So basically what you're looking for, if you have a, like alpha OBD, you connect to your ABS module with Alpha OBD. You have the car running and you look, um, you do a status. Um, I believe it's called um, check system status. Alpha OBD will dump a bunch of variables. The one you're looking for is torque status request set. If that says yes, while the engine is running, but you're getting a C121C, it means the ABS module is bad. If the torque request status says no while the engine is running, it means that the PCM is bad, which is not good. So I ran through that test, PCM, or uh, sorry, torque status set to yes, and then that coupled with the C2200, I am confident it's the ABS module. Now, the good news is this module is actually composed of two pieces. There is the HCU, which is this half. This is where all of your brake fluid, all the control valves for the ABS run from. But back here, this is the actual computer, and they are separate. Uh, a lot of people think they need to buy the entire unit and then go about bleeding the brakes and doing a bunch of other brake work. You don't need to do that. I'm going to show you how you can get this out using this bolt right here. Prop this out gently without breaking or bending your, uh, your brake lines. And then you can pop this off the back and just replace this piece. And then there's some reprogramming that needs to be done. Um, I'm going to see if I can do it without going to the dealer using Alpha OBD. And if I can, I'll show you the steps I did to do that. Worst case, you take it to the dealer. They program a new VIN in here and it costs you whatever, an hour's worth of work, which is about a hundred bucks depending on your dealer. So first thing we will do is disconnect this bolt here. And then I'll show you how to get this out. Oh, we'll also disconnect the wiring harness, which is back there. So I'll be back for that. Okay, so the first thing is to disconnect the wiring harness. So I'm in the engine bay looking out over the fender there. Um, it's not that hard. And unfortunately, my camera mount broke, so I can't mount this and show you. But see those two pieces right there on either end? Those two tabs right above where all the wires are coiled up. Uh, if you can get your fat fingers in there, you basically pinch those together and then pull. It's on a, it's on a cam, so the top is hinged. You'll pull that up and basically um, it will release the cam lock at the same time. So hopefully I can get a good view of how to do this here. All right, so pinched them. Now you can see I'm basically just pulling it up and then it pulls straight out. 
set that aside. So that's step one. Okay, step two. First thing I did was I moved this wiring harness out of the way. You'll see these two clips here. They were right here and right there. And then this thing was laying across it. So I undid those two clips. And then basically I just, I mean, you can use anything. I took a screwdriver and put it in this hole here in the fender just to get it out of my way so I can work a little better. We need to remove this bolt here. It is a 10 millimeter bolt. Uh, easy peasy. I'm going to do that and then I'll be back. All right, step three. So I did this because being on camera, I would have been blocking the whole thing anyway. This is the hole that used to be right there. And you can see down in here, there are one and then way back there, two spots where this was mounted down inside of there. No screws, just rubber grommets. Um, you can work a pry bar under here gently um, and get the front one loose and then basically reach your hand around the back side like this and just kind of wiggle and pull up and you'll feel it give. So there's not a whole lot of give here because these are metal brake lines, but you can get it to where it's up out of the way. What we need access to are these screws here. And there's four of those. So we'll be able to get this off. This is what the new one looks like. So a little bit cleaner, obviously, but to give you an idea of what we're gonna see, there's the wiring harness that we disconnected. And when this thing is on, all these little electronic valves are gonna control the actual HCU. So this is the brains of the operation. Um, these parts, <laughs> two things. One is they change these every couple years. So even if you have a JK with the 3.8 liter from seven to eight, nine through 11, I can't even remember the different model years, all the way up through when they changed to the 3.6 in 2012, there were four versions of this module. None of them are compatible. So you absolutely have to find the one for your exact year and model this one for a 2008 JKX. It is this part number, 6803-0936, Alpha Bravo. Um, the other thing that you'll find, this video was being made in late 2022. We're still having some supply chain shortages because of the pandemic or whatever it is. <laughs> um, you can't find these. I looked online. Um, I got sent an HCU by mistake instead of the ABS controller. Uh, I called seven dealerships uh, in five different states. This one happened to come from someone who had ordered it to do a repair and never came and picked it up. So after they waited two weeks for the customer and they never showed, the parts manager was kind enough to call me back because I gave him my name and number and shipped it to me. Uh, but this alone was, I believe, $600. So it's not a cheap part. Good luck finding one. These things must be made of platinum and gold all put together. Maybe these are little rubies in here. I don't even know. But um, very hard to find. Hopefully, if you're doing this video and it's, you know, maybe I'm dead and gone and it's, you know, the year 20. 82 or something. Maybe you'll find these. But anyway, this is what it looks like. So all we're going to do is disconnect the old one with those four Allen bolts and then pull the old one out, put this one back in, reattach the four bolts. All right, so this is what it looks like with the old control unit off. Um, I lied. These are not Allen keys. These are Torx, of course, because it's cheap. And these are T20 Torx bits. So hopefully that makes it a little easier when you're trying to find the right bit for this. So um, the other thing that I did before I took the other one off, before I took the control unit off, 
is I sprayed compressed air all around this just to get all the grit and dust and crap off of it. Um, so hopefully all the connections are good. So now we're just going to literally slide the other one back on and reattach those four Torx bolts. So new one's on, four bolts are in. Uh, I'm not going to say it was easy trying to manipulate this while getting these in here. Um, I just happen to have a Torx that's a screwdriver. So <laughs> I had to move this around a few times and get the right angle. Obviously you don't want to bend these too much and then have a, a brake fluid problem. So I was trying to be careful, but it's back in. Next thing is to push all this back down in there, line up this with that, and then uh, secure that 10, mil 10 millimeter bolt and then we'll reattach the wiring harness. Okay, all back together. Didn't take long if I wasn't uh, making videos. This maybe would have taken me 15, 20 minutes, I guess. Wiring harness is back. Shut the hood, starter up, and then I will see if we can use Alpha OBD to get this operational or if we need to take it to the dealer. Okay, so when you start this back up, you're immediately going to get all the lights on and you're going to get a fault code that says there is a vehicle configuration mismatch. This is the VIN number that's been programmed into or not programmed into the ABS. It has to match the VIN of the vehicle. So what we're going to attempt to do is do an initialization with Alpha OBD and see if we can get this reprogrammed. Okay, so good news. I was able to use JScan in order to reset the ABS. So I didn't have to take it to the dealer and I was able to get through it. I'm gonna show you how I did that. Um, in JScan, we go to JK. Um, we are gonna go into demo mode because I uh, don't wanna do this again on the vehicle, but you would connect to your particular ODB connection. Go to adaptation, vehicle maintenance, ABS initialization. So this will tell you step-by-step step how to do it I tried this with Alpha OBD. It basically has all of these steps as separate steps, but doesn't really tell you how to transition between them. So at this point, your car is not running, but the ignition is on. You say go. I would recommend that you do this in a school parking lot, somewhere with a lot of room that's flat. So basically, go into the parking lot, stay there, make sure that you can let your foot off the brake and not roll. So wheels are straight, not pressing on the brake at all. And again, the motor is not running at this point, but you're in the on position. So it goes through this, the first initialization. And of course, not going to do it because we're in demo mode. Darn it. Well, I'll tell you what the next phase is. So it goes through initializations. You basically just follow the instructions and click, keep hitting go, go, go. You'll get to a point where it will do a drive cycle test. So what you will do at the drive cycle test, you will start the car, put your foot on the brake and put it in drive. You will then cycle the steering wheel to the left full lock to the right full lock back to the left full lock then to the center and you don't have to remember this again it will tell you how to do all of this you then drive between 3 and 15 miles an hour so a school parking lot's the perfect place to do that you will then make a sweeping hard left turn and then drive for 50 feet. What I did was I made a full lock right turn. So put the steering wheel full lock, 
did a right turn and came full circle, you then come to a complete stop and then you go. Your ABS and your ESP light will be flashing. If you did it correctly, the ESP light will go off. If it stays on solid, it means you need to do the procedure again. The ABS light might still be flashing. So once you are through with that, there's a couple more steps after that that JSCAN will walk you through. Then you go back to the main menu, go to the modules, go to anti-lock brakes, trouble codes, and you'll see a code like this. It will probably say something about wheel speed sensors or something like that. You turn the ignition back to the run position if you're still running, if you're still, if the engine is still running, turn it back to the on position with the engine not running, clear the codes, and then, so of course this isn't gonna do it because it's in demo mode. Turn the ignition off, turn the ignition back on, and everything should be cleared.